Hey everyone, it's Tango Oscar Mike. And yes, I'm wearing my Cletus McFarlane Freedom hat again. Um, today's the day. This, uh, my main antenna coming out of this here, it's mounted right there. It goes up into the tree and then way over there. And that's a 49 to 1 N-Fed. And that's been, in the past, that's been my main antenna for a long, long time. And I have, we, my club did a build. There's a video I think I did on that. And it's running from this tree. You can might be able to see the box mounted to the tree right there. And it runs up into that tree. And this is... Um, east to west, and that antenna is north to south. And I think this antenna, this antenna tunes better. So today I'm taking that antenna down and I'm going to put this antenna in its place because it tunes better. Um, I get more bandwidth on the bands and um, I want to try it over here. This is my main location, this is my main antenna, so I think it's time to move that one. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. And uh, yeah, so I just realized I needed to get my drill to unmount the boxes off the post in the tree. So I am gonna go do that. So I'm getting these antennas down. I got the one down already, it's pulled out here. I have to strip my weatherproofing off of it and then uh, run the wire out and do that. Since I've been operating the, both of these antennas for a while, one thing I have noticed is that the 36 to 1 is quieter than the 49 to 1, meaning less static, less noise. Um, the signals are about the same, but again, it's in a different direction. So I'm really anxious to see what it's like once I put this back up. And maybe I'll move the 49 to one over there so I have uh, diff two different directions. But for now, I'm probably just gonna leave it down. But I'm gonna get my weatherproofing off and uh, get this back up. I am gonna try, I printed this 3D split pulley. And I have these cheap carabiners, but it should be a, a plenty strong enough to hold this. I don't know how well this carabiner is going to hold up. Uh, it's printed in PETG. Um, it's not perfect. I reduced the size on the print um, So it is a little thinner and I'm, now I'm questioning whether or not I should just do another print with a full-size pulley but I don't know. I think I'll try it. I have been using this metal pulley um, But as you can see you have to run the wire through the center of that pulley so it makes it a pain to put it up and down because this wire i can't do that because it has a capacitor on the line so that'll get in the way so i'm not going to do that. i'm going to try using the split pulley we'll see how that works but yeah let me get to work so hopefully you can see how i do my weatherproofing is the outside layer is electrical tape and then underneath is that self amalgamating rubber tape which is almost impossible to get off once it's on once it's on it just kind of sticks to itself enough that trying to peel it off sometimes if you can get it started it'll come off but yeah it's just it's just gonna tear and shred so it's almost easier just to cut it and pull it down Cut it on the connector so I don't have to worry. And then underneath that, I have more electrical tape to prevent it from st sticking to my coax. So I can take this off.
Okay, got rid of that. Okay, so the um, 36 to 1 antenna is up in place where the 49 to 1 used to be. Uh, I reclaimed some mass drink cable uh, or guy line, which I use for my antennas. On the other end of the antenna, I have the Dacron rope sold by DX Engineering. And it's been up there for a long time and it's still going strong. It seems very strong. It's not fraying. But the difference I notice is that that wire gets like, uh, not mold, but like growth on it from being wet all the time because it absorbs more water and then it dries out and it seems very stiff, um, like dry stiff. Well, this is stiff, but it's just because of the way it's woven. So the mass drain, uh, guy, guy rope, in my opinion, lasts much longer. This is, I think, three millimeter or 3.5, I can't remember. I wouldn't go any smaller than this because it's hard to work with. I got some really small stuff, it was like two millimeter. You can't grab it and put any force on it. So this is good. Uh, all I got to do now is clean up uh, my connections in the box and test the antenna from the inside. But it looks good. It's hanging out in the yard. It's away from the trees. I shouldn't have any problems. It does look like it's sagging a little bit, so I might have to tighten it up a little bit, but looks like it'll be good. So I just tested the antenna with my Nano VNA and the readings aren't as good as they were before. Uh, I'm going to check my counterpoise here and maybe, maybe I should add another counterpoise. Um, let me just stretch this out, make sure it's stretched out good and try it again. Um, it's great on 20 meters and, but on 40 and 80, it's a little high. It actually looks like the wire is a little short. That's how it's looking good. Again, this is in an inverted L and not a sloper like I had it before. I probably could do a sloper, but then the wire's hanging low in the yard and I don't want to do that. So I'm probably going to play with the counterpoise, maybe add another counterpoise, um, maybe even connect this I have a ground system. Maybe I should try connecting it to my ground system as well, um, which it wasn't before and it was reading perfectly. So maybe if I connect it to my ground system, it will help out a little bit. Hmm. Let me do that and I'm going to test it again. Well, I, I played around a little bit. I connected it to my ground system and that helped. So I thought, well, what the heck? I will add more radials. Uh, again, this is a 36 to 1. You do need radials uh, for tuning. So I just grabbed some scrapped radials that I had. I, I honestly don't know how long they are. I don't know if they need to be longer or not. But So now there's three radials on this and it did bring everything down. So it's pretty much usable across all the bands. The only place that it's not usable is in the digital mode of 80 meters. Uh, on the voice mode of 80 meters, it's fine. Uh, 40 is good. It's like 1.6, 1 1.7. 1 uh, 10 meters is great. 20 meters is excellent. It's flat across the entire band. So, and I just made three contacts. Um, Minnesota, two in Minnesota. It was, a, it was a, two activators at a park uh, and one in Wisconsin. Uh, I was using the Polo app, the spotting on the Polo app and hunting parks that way. I've been trying it out. I'm, it, when I'm at home, usually I'm using N3 FJP, which is a fantastic. It's been great. We use it for contesting for the club and everything else. Um, but as the designer for Polo has showed that when you have multiple operators or you have multiple parks, N3 FJP doesn't work. So if I had two operators in two different parks, in N3 FJP, I would be making four entries, uh, which is kind of a pain um, when hunting. And I like to record the park myself so that I can see if I worked that park before, etc. So uh, I just did it with Pelo and it actually, it works. It's, I'm gonna go do a parks on the air and try it out because I really think I might, for the first time, 
use my phone. I've been a paper guy up until now. So like I was saying, I'm using the Polo app, uh, trying it out. Um, I saw like lots of you probably have seen all the videos uh, with the designer, uh, KI2D, I believe. Um, and the demos have been amazing. I, I honestly was like, holy cow. Uh, it was impressive. And I hope, uh, I would love to work running on a desktop too as well to try it out. But um, so I've been running Polo on my phone and it, it's like anything else, it's taken a little bit to get used to, but I honestly think that I might be able to use it for a POTA activation. I've tried other things to do a POTA activation. I've tried other things, other apps. Uh, I don't want to take a laptop to a POTA activation. I hate using my phone. I hate typing on my phone with most logging apps. There's too much. It's too much of a pain. But just from trying the Polo app, it seems pretty simple. And I like the interface. It's just, like I said, anything new is gonna take a, a little bit to get used to. But I, I think I might be able to finally do it and give up paper. I mean, I, I don't know, we'll have to see. I'm, I'm definitely gonna try it out. But so far it's been good. But the antenna's good, it's up. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how it works in an inverted L configuration. But um, the antenna's worked. To do a flat topper on this antenna here, uh, because there would be no ground system, it would be using the coax as a ground, uh, as a radio at that point. Um, I think it's better as an N-fed, and in this case, as an inverted L. Um, and also, when you want to do a flat topper, you have to have a way to support the coax. Otherwise, it, it pulls out of the connectors, uh, and it puts a lot of wear on the, the tear on the coax and the shield just by swinging in the air like that. So. Man, my road has been busy today, so. Um, but yeah, so got a little antenna work done. I'll be playing with it the next few days and I'll go from there. Hey, this is Tango Oscar Mike saying 73. Take care.